This is Dan from MSS Enduralist. Welcome to the channel. But we're getting ahead of our story. In this great expanse live 150 million people for whom this land must provide food. Yes, 150 million people who must be supplied with food every day, 365 days a year. The first food stamp program ran from 1939 to 1943 as America emerged from the Great Depression. Food stamps weren't reinstated until the 1960s. And this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. In 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Food Stamp Act, making food assistance a permanent government service. Originally, food stamps were just that, stamps that one would buy with cash to receive food at a discounted price. It wasn't until 1977 that people below the poverty line were actually given food stamps without a required purchase. I have a part-time job that doesn't pay very well and it's barely covering my rent and I don't have health insurance and I have a chronic disease so I can't get health insurance. And yeah, and I have a master's degree and here I am, I'm applying for food stamps. It's just where I am right now and I'm no different from anybody else that needs food stamps. Household that I screened today was a gentleman who just moved from Sacramento. Do you have any bank accounts, checking, yeah. savings? What would you say is your balance there today? Eight dollars. Eight dollars? Yeah, left, yeah. Uh, I used to be working for the Red Line Hotel. As a driver, I was driving limo, shelter. He worked as a chauffeur, employee of the month. He worked for 23 years. They let, let me off. No business. He's been applying for the last two months and has been unable to find employment. Even I have like 25 years experience. His unemployment benefits have now run out. He's really in a desperate situation and really if it weren't for his immediate family that's helping him, he would probably be out on the streets right now. Contrary to many public misperceptions and media portrayals, the largest demographic of food stamp recipients, over 40%, are white. Richard is an out-of-work preschool teacher who has been on and off of food stamps for years and who has been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. He prides himself on his expert budget shopping. Here is the list. Written by me. Nice handwriting. <laughs> I got told I wrote like a girl all through school. <laughs> hey, you write that where down. are we and where are we going? He even borrows his girlfriend's car and drives 40 miles each way to shop at the cheapest store. We went with Richard on a typical shopping run, right after he received his monthly food stamp allotment. This is a big store. It is a big store. It's almost like you get a workout just going shopping. <laughs> Well, you know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Maybe over in this section. So how much do you get a month? <coughs> I get $176. For just you? For just me. At $176 a month, Richard is on the upper end of the food stamp allotment for an individual. Even so, he still has to make every penny count. I don't necessarily eat what my doctor would say is a complete balanced meal every time I eat. I buy Top Ramen, something that has absolutely no nutritional benefit whatsoever, but it's quick and it's easy and it's cheap. All right. So what's the difference between the pork and the chicken? Just the flavor of the seasoning packet. That's flavored to taste like pork, and this is flavored to taste like chicken. <laughs> and that's really the only difference I can tell you about. Richard does like vegetables, but since he spends most of his budget in one trip, he runs out of fresh produce well before the end of the month and has to switch to canned fruits and vegetables, which lack the nutrients and flavor of fresh produce. I'm Sarah Nolan. I'm 24 years old and I serve as an AmeriCorps fellow at Habitat for Humanity. I make 19K over 11 months. 
The math just wasn't adding up and I realized despite my hatred of paperwork and despite the fact that it made me kind of uncomfortable, I had to apply for food stamps. I just dished out way more than 99 cents on Chia Seeds. <laughs> yeah. pretty good. I'm looking at different apple varieties and pounds and how much it costs per pound and trying to do some mental math, which is not exactly my strong suit. Where did you go shopping yesterday? I went to Trader Joe's. Nice. I also went to the farmer's market, which you can shop at the farmer's market on food stamps. Really? Yeah. So you're looking at price? I'm looking at price, and it's sort of I have this desire to buy organic. I, I agree with it too, but also, you know, occasionally I'll buy stuff and I'll take the stickers off so my roommates don't know one way or the other if it's organic or not. Uh, they're gonna get mad at me if it's not organic. Can you even buy organic vanilla extract? I can go comparison shopping. If I was like the head of a household and I was really busy and I was working two jobs, multiple shifts, I think it'd be way harder to eat healthy. Were there things that were like you, you thought of as luxuries before that now you can get? Are you, do you think yeah. you're splurging on Oh my on gosh, anything? I bought goat cheese yesterday. It was really exciting. <laughs> I think it's a big conundrum. It's not just solved by like having enough money for food, so food stamps get you part of the way there, but it's hard. <laughs>I make about $7.50 every two weeks, and I spend $7.50 of it on rent a month. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, you have a degree from Duke University. You could easily be making a salary way more than 19000 a year and not being on food stamps. What do you say to that? I felt really bad about being on food stamps for a while. They're just for people who really, really need it, I thought. And I'm like living this flippant lifestyle in San Francisco. Do you think you really, really need it? Well, yeah. And eventually I just sort of realized that even though I'm 24, like, I still have responsibilities, I still have like hopes for my future, and if I need to be on food stamps to make that happen, then maybe I do really need it. You can cut the zucchini. Okay, should I do it here? Yeah, go for okay. it. So I'm sort of torn because I am like, Using the same services, a lot of our beneficiaries, people that I work for at Habitat, but like it's, it's strange to be in the same programs that people I'm helping are, are in, and I feel like, did I really succeed with my Duke degree if I'm at this point? <laughs> like part of the reason I'm doing like sacrifice to do what I do is because I like it. Like I like talking to people about what's going on in their lives. Like it more than selling people furniture, which is what I did last year. Things they don't maybe need. You made more money doing that? Oh yeah, definitely. I made like a normal Bay Area salary then. And I was in a position, like we were talking about earlier, where I was privileged enough to do something different. Take a risk. Like, I'm 24. There's definitely real stuff at stake. Like, I shouldn't be complacent in a job I don't like. But I can still fail a couple more times and hopefully figure it out from there. Do you consider yourself part of the working force? Yes, I am working and I am currently low income. I think the difference for me and a lot of other millennials is we see it as transitory. Like, I have more friends than I initially would have thought that are on food stamps or couch surfing instead of living somewhere. Um, a lot of people make sacrifices to sort of be on the right path and sometimes it takes you to these sorts of places where you're on food stamps. <laughs>